Painting and repeating. That's what we're going to do in this lesson. First of all, I want to show you how you can repeat animations and then how you can paint them. Let's take a look at this slide. And on this slide, I want to show you what we're going to create with a repetition. Now, there's, this repetition, in my opinion, is too lengthy, but I did it on purpose to show you how you can just stop it. So first of all, the animation brings in a group of people. The repetition is the emphasis of pulse is repeating four times for that group. It repeats four times. See, now it's stopped. Now the exact same thing's going to happen, the entrance and then the repetition. Now I can stop the repetition just by clicking and moving forward and it goes on to the next group. So as you can see, my people are going to come in in groups and they're going to come in with the float up and then the repetition is going to be the pulse, although we're not going to pulse it four times because four is a little too much. But like I said, I want you to see you can stop it at any time just by continuing on forward. Let's go to the next slide then and show you how I did this. First off, we want to set up the entrance. So I'm choosing my group of people down here, and the entrance is simply float in. I want them to float in, and they're floating up, so that's fine. Otherwise, I would change the effect options. Now, just to show you that it doesn't have to be the emphasis, we're also going to put a repetition on this and then take it off. So we'll drop down the group, and where the repetition is, it's on the timing tab of the dialog box. So we're going to go to the timing tab, and right here you have repeat. By default, it says none, but you have two, three, four, five, ten, until next click or until the end of the slide. Well, let's just have it repeat twice and then we'll say okay and now when I go out onto my slide what's going to happen is when I bring in my graphic when the animation happens it'll happen twice because I told it to repeat. Well what if you have a repetition and you don't want it? I don't want this one. Oh and by the way look you see the icon it's showing me that it has a split down the middle that it's repeating twice. When I drop this down and I go back to the timing tab I can say no I really didn't want to do that and I can turn it off no repetition on there. What I want to repeat is the emphasis. So let's add the animation and the animation that I want is the pulse emphasis. So now I have the pulse emphasis but it's only going to pulse one time. I want it to pulse twice. So I drop down and you know where to go timing and you set things up in here the way you want it to behave and I, I don't want this to happen on the click I want it to happen after so I want to set this up so after the people come in then they pulse and I want them to repeat twice I want them to pulse twice when they come in now the rewind when done playing on here um, this is well let's turn on I'll show you it's not really going to do anything on this one because there's no rewind there's nothing different to do let me show you click here they come in pulse twice and there's nothing to rewind because it's going to stop the same way it started. But what if these people spun upside down? Well, then the rewind would put them back right side up again. So if you need the rewind, the rewind is simply going to make it like finish where it started. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. I don't need the rewind on there. So I'm going to go, oh, I hit the wrong one. I wanted to go to timing, but you can see we can turn it off here. I just don't need it. So we'll say, okay. So now I have the exact, it's exactly what I want and I want to paint it. I want to paint this entrance and the repeat of the pulse to the different groups. So you select the sample that you want to use and then on the animations ribbon in the advanced animation group you have an animation painter and it almost has a book here in the tooltip that pops up. But it's basically telling you the same thing I'm saying plus if you want to paint multiple times you double click. But before I do that I want to make sure that it works. So I'm clicking on the animation painter. Not that it works but that I did it right. Look at my mouse. My mouse is looking just like the format painter and that's exactly what I'm doing but I'm painting the animation so let's go get the bottom people here let's go grab the bottom group and let's go check out on the slide before we paint everyone let's go make sure that it works so my first one we know works yep that looks good now the painter works it's just does it do what I want that's what I mean by works yep that's exactly what I want so now let's paint them all you choose your sample you get your sample going make sure you only select it once there's my sample double click the animation painter and it's going to be stuck to my mouse now click in the order that you want them to show up so the next group I want are my top people I want my top people to come in and then I want my two gentlemen to come in but be careful look how this group overlaps my my gentlemen so I want to make sure I click on the edge I'll show you what happens later when you don't do that right and then my last group are these people down here in the middle and now I have all of my people animated by using my repeat tool my animation painter lets me paint the exact same animation and included in my animation is a repetition of one of the animations let me hit escape to turn off my paintbrush because anytime something is stuck to your mouse you just escape to turn it off and let's go check out the slide so when I'm on the slide now here's my first entrance that one's looking good second one 
Oh, yeah. And you know you can just go forward if you don't want to wait for the repetition of the pulses. And, yeah, I like the way all these groups are coming on. So that's going to work great in my presentation. Let's hit escape. That's good. So save, right? So you don't forget. You don't lose things. Now let me show you some, um, I don't want to call them problems, but limitations of what's going on. Look, you can tell here what this is. You can tell it's a trigger. And a trigger is simply a way that you trigger, you start the animation. And let me just show you what it is. So what I have here is when I click on the trigger, it wobbles the object. Well, the trigger is the same object that's going to be animated. So my painter will work on this. I won't have any problems with my painter. So choose your sample and then double click the animation painter to continue painting. But I will have a problem here. So I click on Excel and then I'm going to click on PowerPoint and then I'm going to click on access and then I'm going to click on hey are you seeing what my problem is I'm missing the objects and here's the reason the reason is these are groups this shape is grouped with a line that ends up here and so what my problem is is this group is so big that when I'm clicking on Outlook I'm not really clicking on Outlook I'm really clicking again on the access bubble so what you want to watch for when you're using your paintbrush when you're using your format painter is you're actually clicking and formatting the object. See, I did it again. Let's see where I can get this one. There we go. And so you want to be cautious that you're getting the actual pieces. And so the way I can tell is who has the um, lightning bolt or click escape, remember, to turn that off. Go back out into my slideshow and I can test it. That one does. Nope, PowerPoint doesn't access. Okay, so it's only PowerPoint that got missed. So let's select one of my animations, click on the animation painter, and let's click on PowerPoint there. Now they all have the animation. So this one worked because the trigger and the object that's being animated are one in the same. But let me show you when you cannot use the format painter to do a trigger. Here's what's going on on this slide. On this slide, and I only have one set, but on this slide, you click on the circle and it activates the appear animation. Okay, well, let's format that and paint it. So I select the, what I want. I want this trigger and I'll click on my animation painter. I'll double click, click to turn it on and let's paint it to my team player and we'll paint it to balance and we'll paint it to, uh oh, are you seeing what's happening here? Look, I can tell immediately I have a problem because my little icon is showing me an animation. It's not showing me a trigger. So here's what actually I'm painting. What I'm using with my animation painter is I'm painting the animation. It's, it's doing exactly what it's telling me. It's just this time it can't bring the trigger along with me. And the reason it can't bring the trigger is because it's the exact same trigger over and over. And this circle, the big blue circle, let me just show it to you. The big blue circle here, it can only trigger one thing and it's the appearance of that. Now these are just animations and it doesn't matter where I click. My format painter, excuse me, my animation painter painted the animation. It just couldn't pick up the trigger. Well, that's all right. Now I'm halfway there. Now I'll just have to go back in and select the object and set the trigger up on my own. But that's not hard to do at all. Not at all. And so then you can work through your slideshow and you can create your animations and those animations can have the repetition feature applied to them. And then you can go in and you can paint those animations to another location and that'll save you a lot of time and a lot of energy instead of redoing things again and again and again. Just paint them again and again and again and it'll be fast and easy. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free 7-day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.